Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. The daily street protests demanding the resignation of Belarus's authoritarian president, Alexander Lukashenko, haven't yet tipped the balance against his regime. Lukashenko is still there. The security forces are still doing his bidding. So how is the geopolitics of this going to play out? Well, my guest is Gitanas Nauseda, the president of neighboring Lithuania. Will Moscow's will prevail in Belarus or will people power take the country in a new direction? President Gitanas Nauseda in Vilnius, welcome to Hard Talk. Good evening. Mr. President, how do you see the power dynamic in Belarus right now? Do you think President Lukashenko has ridden out the storm? Yes, of course. Alexander Lukashenko tries to buy the time and tries to suppress the um, protests of peaceful people in the streets. Right now the people are fighting for their um, fundamental rights to have free elections, to express their opinion about what is going on in Belarus. And unfortunately, we see a lot of violations and this continues. And it brings very huge concern to all of us, not only for neighboring countries, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Poland, Ukraine, but also for European Union. This is the reason why we started to react very fast and we proposed the plan of de-escalation of situation. We consolidated our efforts together with presidents of uh, surrounding countries. Uh, unfortunately, Alexander Lukashenko was not ready to take uh, this initiative and he turned towards Vladimir Putin. Probably this is the reason why the situation in last days, in last weeks, deteriori is deteriorating and uh, we see again the violations, we see just detained people, disappearing people, and we see very selective and targeted attacks against uh, the uh, people or persons which are in National Coordination Committee. You, so the situation yeah. is not calm and it's not... Yeah, yep. the situation is certainly not calm, Mr. President. You just referred to Alexander Lukashenko as the president of Belarus. I want to be very clear about this. Do you still recognize his legitimacy as the head of state or are you now of the view that he has no legitimacy because, as you said recently, there was no free, fair election in Belarus. So is he legitimate or not? I am talking about Alexander Lukashenko as person. And of course, we cannot uh, talk about the elections which uh, took uh, place on August 9th as fair and free elections. So the result is not legitimate and Alexander Lukashenko is not legitimate president of this country. But of course nobody can neglect uh, and reject that Alexander Lukashenko still has certain power and this power he is using unfortunately in very bad direction and then we can uh, not agree on this. You are the, the, the neighbor of Belarus, you are where most of the Belarusian senior opposition figures who have been forced out of Belarus have gathered, not least Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, who was, of course, the candidate who ran against Lukashenko, and she claims she won that election had it not been rigged. So are you saying that Ms. Tikhonovskaya is actually the winner of that election, and are you recognizing her as the de facto uh, leader of Belarus in exile? We can call here as de facto leader, but the problem is that the elections of uh, August 9th were spoiled. 
and we cannot prove it by um, giving the figures, giving the result, and nobody can say what votes are uh, the votes indeed and what votes are the fake votes. Because the appearance rate in some districts of Belarus during this election was more than 100 percent. So this is a problem to say what was the real result. We can guess that uh, Madam Tsikhanovskaya uh, was the winner of those elections. We treat her as a national leader and uh, she is the leader of uh, opposition movement right now. She oh, um, is in Lithuania for the moment and uh, sh she is safe and uh, safe together with her family. Right, so you are offering her protection, but I just wonder how helpless, how frustrated do you feel right now, Mr. President? You, as you've said, you've spoken out very loud uh, against Lukashenko for weeks now, but even today, as we speak to each other, the Belarusian paramilitary forces are still continuing to repress the protesters. They are picking up senior opposition figures on the streets. They picked up a, another one a very short time ago, Maxim Znak. That fo follows the detention of Maria Koles uh, Kolesnikova. You know this is continuing. Your voice makes no difference. Uh, so this is the reason why we need actions. Yes, rhetoric is good, but rhetoric, even strong rhetoric, is not enough. We need actions. And uh, free Baltic states uh, took the initiative and showed this uh, example how to deal uh, with uh, Lukashenko and initiated the national sanctions lists. Uh, we have 30 persons in each of this list, including Alexander Lukashenko. I, uh, I am stressing that it's extremely important that other uh, regions and countries, European Union as a whole, uh, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, should apply the same sanctions to the Belarusian regime. And uh, yes, we had the European Council some time ago. I was very satisfied with, this, the, with the result of this Council because there were strong uh, commitments, strong judgment of the situation. All leaders uh, spoken uh, out a very clear vision what to do with Belarus. But unfortunately, uh, so far we do not see the list of European Union. And according to some uh, drafts, I can say that there are 17 persons included. And Lukashenko excluded from right. this list. So this I is very, this is Mr. President, I, I, measure let, let, to let me stop fight. you there. This is very important. People around the world need to hear what you think is going on. You're saying that as you understand it, the EU's list of potential targets for new sanctions in Belarus, the individuals do not include Lukashenko himself. Now you Baltic states have already imposed your targeted sanctions on a list of individuals, including Lukashenko. So why do you think the European Union as a whole is not following your lead? Uh, the logic behind is to leave some room for possible mediation in the future. We leave the door or the window open for possible negotiations uh, with Alexander Lukashenko, of, co of course, including the representatives of civil society. But I really have my doubts that this is still possible. We see that this certain breaking point, and this breaking point is the contacts of Alexander Lukashenko with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. And we see that Lukashenko is just not ready to uh, have any mediation, especially from the side of European Union. And what is extremely important, the mediation includes the representatives of civil society. If there are no representatives of civil society, what mediation is it? Mediation between Lukashenko and Putin. We are, not, we are talking not about this mediation. We are talking about the mediation uh, which includes every party. And this is not the case, and I have very big doubts that it will happen in the future because of, uh, unfortunately, 
limited readiness of Alexander Lukashenko to go this way. Let me be blunt with you. Why do you think the big powers in the European Union, including France and Germany, are not prepared to go as far and condemn Lukashenko in the same language that you use? Why? You know, we are very close to a Belarus nation, not only in geographic sense, but also in emotional sense. We feel the pain of those people in the streets of Minsk and other cities and other uh, villages in Belarus. We see uh, how they are suffering. We hear the stories about violations, about the tortures, and just we emotionally are very close to them. Maybe this is not the case if we are talking, if we are talking about the countries which are really distant from, from, from uh, Belarus. But nevertheless, it's extremely important to fight this common denominator in European Union. And sometimes it's, it's pretty hard to find this solution. Do you Even think, if they find the solution at the political level. Do you think, and yes, you just use the word torture about what is going on with the paramilitary forces uh, in Belarus, do you think uh, that right now Alexander Lukashenko is guilty of crimes against humanity and do you want to see him prosecuted for what is happening right now? I'm mindful that your foreign minister, Mr. Linkovicius, recently said that he is seeing Stalinist NKVD methods being applied on the streets of Minsk in 21st century Europe. If you are serious about that, then presumably you want to see Lukashenko in a courtroom. You know, first of all, we need clear and uh, detailed investigation. And this investigation is not possible right now. If this investigation is over, then we can name the persons who are guilty for these violences. But uh, you are totally right by saying that it reminds us just Soviet time. We see how they are uh, targeting, targeting the people which are in a uh, National Coordination Committee or Council. Svetlana Alexievich, other members of uh, uh, Coordination Council. I uh, remember uh, the time about 40, 50 years ago, and uh, this time was in Soviet Union. Rostropovich, uh, Solzhenitsyn, they, uh, they were extradicted uh, from the country and they were persecuted. And we see the same story here in Belarus. So it shows that the uh, people are different, the new ger generations are coming, but the methods of certain institutions remain the same. You're playing a dangerous game, Mr. President. Uh, Vilnius, where you sit today, has been described as the second capital of the Belarusian opposition. Everything you've told me today shows how determined you are to speak out against uh, Lukashenko and demand an end to his regime. You are going to be directly at odds with Moscow and you know it. And it is very possible that you will su suffer consequences as a result of that. You know, Democratic values, principal values, does not have the price. This is not cost-benefit analysis like uh, in uh, the economic policy or uh, economic analysis. This is uh, uh, principles, fundamental uh, values we strongly believe in. We didn't forget our history, uh, newest history of Lithuania. Let uh, me remind you, uh, 30 years ago, Lithuania declared the independency. And it was a like dark tunnel in our life. And we had a hope that there will be light uh, on the end of this tunnel. And at that time, small country, Iceland, far away from Lithuania, stepped in and recognized our independency. And we didn't forget it. We think that now we must do the same that Iceland did 30 years ago. But the danger is you may be 
inadvertently assisting Vladimir Putin. He wants to portray what is happening in Belarus as an exercise in meddling from Western interests, the European Union, NATO, forces trying to move into Russia's sphere of influence. And he says that is illegitimate and dangerous, for not just for Minsk, but for Moscow as well. By being so strident, you may be helping Putin with his narrative. You know, you can not push anyone who is already hugged by the bear. So uh, I think this is a consequence of economic policy uh, or economic model uh, who uh, Lukashenko implemented in the last 20 years. And this economic model was based on the cheap energy resources coming from Russia, cheap salaries or uh, uh, cheap labor force, and of course it's not sustainable. The Belarusian economy uh, is not competitive, and he, uh, she, it could be uh, kept uh, above the water only with cheap energy resources from Russia. What is now uh, going, uh, just we see height indebtedness, indebtedness of uh, Belarus towards Russia. About 50% of this debt belongs to Russia. And we see uh, economic trade ties, very close ties with Russia. And uh, of course in this situation, Lukashenko loses its power. And uh, Putin has many instruments in many instruments just to achieve his goal. And well, his goal is, yes. ultimate goal, is to merge bo both states into one body. And uh, now he sees Lukashenko as very convenient partner who lost the power and he who is totally exposed to the will of uh, Vladimir Putin. So, this, so, yes, this is a fact, you, but Mr. we President. should not blame the Lithuania, we should not blame the Russian people that uh, the situation is like this. But what is the end game here, Mr. President? You've just said the Russians want to see Belarus effectively merged with Russia by economic and political means, and they will use whatever leverage they have over Lukashenko to achieve that in the next few weeks and months. So what's the end game? If Lukashenko looks like he is going to be toppled, do you believe Russia will intervene militarily? I think there is no need to intervene uh, militarily because they can use another instruments and probably they learned some lessons from Ukraine. So uh, I think they will try to intervene in much more subtle way and uh, much will depend on the people, of, on the ordinary people which are protesting in the streets in, and we have to help them. And European Union and other powers in the world should not stand uh, aside and just uh, expressing the rhetoric. Rhetoric is not enough today. I we need actions and we ne need actions as quick as possible because otherwise it will be too late. I want to ask you uh, a question based on a bigger picture. That is whether you are worried right now that the will of the West, and let's talk about both the European Union and NATO, the will of the Western powers to stand up to Vladimir Putin is not good enough, not strong enough. I'm thinking, for example, of the fairly muted reaction so far to what the Germans insist was the poisoning of Alexei Navalny on Russian territory. I'm also thinking of the American decision earlier this summer to begin withdrawing troops from Germany and President Macron recently saying that he fears NATO is brain dead. Do you fear that the West is losing the will to confront Vladimir Putin? I expect much more. Uh, really, I hope that uh, we have to find the will, political will, to act more, much more decisively than we do right now. So this is a problem. 
Uh, European Union uh, was blamed many times that European Union reacts too slow, too late and too little. So let us to prove that the reality is different. Let us to take decisive measures and uh, I hope that it will happen. NATO as an organization is totally good for Lithuania. We think that NATO organization, the brain of NATO, is not dead and we enjoy very good cooperation with NATO on uh, many levels, on the level of uh, common military plans. Uh, we have enhanced forward presence in Lithuania uh, several years in the row. Uh, we ourselves, we are very serious and, and responsible member of NATO, ally of the NATO, spending 2% of GDP and we expect that other countries will do the same, uh, will increase the defense spending. I don't think that uh, potential of NATO ex is exhausted. All right, I Mr. think President. that this yeah. is only one organization, very effective organization of defense and deterrence. Mr. President, we're almost out of time. I want to raise one other issue with you. You've talked about your discontent with the EU reaction to what is happening in Belarus, but of course the EU is preoccupied with other challenges not least uh, ironing out all of the problems connected with Brexit. The British are due to end their transition relationship with the EU at the end of this year and the hope is there will be a trade agreement but right now that looks very difficult not least because the British government has just declared that it is going to uh, pass legislation in the British Parliament which ministers have explicitly said will override elements of the withdrawal agreement with the EU and which will in fact violate international law. Now as a head of state of an EU member, how do you feel about what the British government is currently doing? I feel not good and uh, I regret the decision of the United Kingdom to leave uh, European Union but I respect this decision. But now what is going on to renegotiate to correct the withdrawal agreement is just not uh, acceptable and we, this is really uh, pretty hard to talk about such things because we have to respect what we reached during very long negotiation period with big efforts of uh, main uh, negotiators and we achieved this result and it's just not appropriate to reconsider this agreement right now. And a final thought, all of the tough talk right now from London, from the Boris Johnson government about how they, uh, within weeks, may well have to walk away from any effort to get a trade agreement and accept that there will be no trade deal with the EU after December 31st of this year. Do you see this as just more political maneuvering and bluffing? Or do you take it seriously when Boris Johnson says that Britain uh, can regard no deal as a good outcome. Is he being serious or not? No deal is not good outcome for everybody, for all countries, for European Union and for Britain too. So we uh, are interested, and I'm talking not only about European Union but also about my country, we are interested to have the uh, process done and to have the United Kingdom as a good foreign trade partner uh, we are like-minded countries uh, in uh, other fields too, uh, security, defense policy. So let us cooperate in the future and let us not undermine our good cooperation until now. All right. Well, Mr. President, Gitanas Naseda, I thank you very much indeed for joining me from Vilnius.